I'm John Harrington, former astronaut and a proud citizen of the Chickasaw Nation. I was the first Native American to go to space. But it's the Earth that fascinates me the most. I'm on a mission to visit the most iconic winter sports destinations in the beautiful Western USA. From extreme sports enthusiasts to amateur snow lovers, there's something for everyone in America's winter wonderland. You know, just four hours north of Salt Lake City lies a hidden gem of the American West, Driggs, Idaho. Today, I'm trying a wild sport that I've never experienced in person, ski drawing. Well, ski drawing is, you, you got a horse that's pulling somebody on skis, and I'm told the horses will go up to 30 to 35 miles an hour. The professionals, they have gates you go through and you do the jumps, and so it's pretty exciting. You know, centuries ago, the Sami people of Northern Europe would harness their skis to reindeer to get from point A to point B. About 100 years ago, ski drawing caught on over here and became a popular sport. I've got to try this for myself. So somebody told me this is like cowboys and hippies rolled into one. It's, that's exactly what it exactly is. Exactly what it is. Because like, I brought the, my tie-dye, kind of. So, right? Yeah. That's the greatest thing with this sport, is it brings two people from completely two different worlds all together really? at once. So how'd you get into this sport? Uh, I had a, a co-worker that was all about ski drawing in Helena, and he wanted to ski, and I said, yes, let's do this. That's the great thing about this sport. Almost every race, even if you don't even know a person that owns a horse, you can show up to registration, and you'll find, you'll you'll, find, a, horse. You'll find a horse. It's a family, so if you need something, like, we'll help you. If you bring a horse here and you don't have your saddle set up, somebody will come and help you. Sounds good to me. Well, I'm just gonna... It's my turn to try. So how, how fast do you think you're gonna pull me on this? Oh, we'll go probably do like a 22. Okay. Um, we're gonna use that one guy's horse. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna pull you behind these yes. guys. Yes. They're, <laughs> I'd kill you. <laughs> not on these. So these just, i die if I got pulled behind these, so. <laughs> If you say go, like I'll go. Okay. We need a safe word. What's a safe word? <laughs> yeah. Your safe word is pineapple. Safe word is pineapple. Okay. Yeah. And pineapple means slow down. Okay. And then, and then go, go means go. Go means go. Oh boy. Because if you say whoa, whoa, I'm gonna hear go, go. and I'm and gonna I, go. We don't whoa go. We, we don't. We don't go whoa whoa. Whoa whoa. We will go Let's go. go. Oh, no. oh no. So pineapple. Oh no. Looks like I'm up next. You know, whether you're an experienced skier or just casually curious. The people of Driggs make sure any and all visitors get a chance to join in on the fun. Go. Go. <laughs> like I found a new sport. With the first run under my belt, I feel like I can level up. Let's hope I'm right. Good job, man. Let's do this again. It's fun. Thank you. I didn't fall. I want to go out next time. I'll go faster. How about that. What a ride. Driggs is such a warm and welcoming community, even in this blizzard. On the other side of the great state of Idaho lies another storied little mountain town, McCall. It's about two hours north of Boise. You know, this time of year, the town is buzzing about their winter carnival. 
and a big part of the yearly tradition is the annual Idaho Sled Dog Challenge. McCall's 300-mile race serves as a qualifier for the famous Iditarod race in Alaska. People come from all over just to see the race kick off. But I'm here a little early to help my friend Jerry finish setting it up. I'm here at the Idaho Sled Dog Challenge in McCall, Idaho with the guy that started it all, Jerry Worley. Why did you start the Idaho Sled Dog Challenge? Well, I had been involved with the Iditarod for a number of years as an Iditarod Air Force pilot supporting the race in the air. There's no roads west of Anchorage and all the supplies and people and everything on the Iditarod have to be flown. So that gave me a little background to start this. It looked like the ideal place to have a race of this nature, so that's why we started it. Now this is actually a qualifier for the Iditarod, right? Do they finish first here? Do they get to run in the Iditarod, or how's that work? No, they have to uh, finish in a top percentage in order to qualify. And we're one of only three 300-mile qualifiers for the Iditarod and the Yukon Quest in the lower 48. So how many days does it take for them to run the 300-miler? How many, how many days is that? Three, three days. Three days. Okay. You know, three days is a long time out on the trail for the mushers. But I know this area pretty well, so I'm going to help Jerry set the last few trail markers down towards the wide checkpoint. You know, to guide the mushers along. Would want anybody getting lost now. God, the landscape out here is beautiful. It's so serene. And the powder is perfect for all kinds of activities. I've still got a bit of time before the race kicks off. I'm gonna check out one of the race checkpoints that the mushers will pass through. Here we are at the Y checkpoint with Mark and Lisa Schneider. So tell us what this is all about. Well, we started this about, what, five, five years ago? Five years ago. Yeah. We feed the mushers, we feed the handlers. Since it's a finish, they'll be, we'll run them over to their trucks where the dogs will be fed. Our layover optional. is optional, but they usually will probably stay anywhere from three to six hours. How fast do they go? What's the average they'll, they'll cross the trail line? If they're going short distances, they can run 10, 12 miles an hour. Awesome. Once they get up to the top, you know, obviously they're going downhill most of the rest of the way down. Yeah. They'll have a pretty good clip going today. I expect to see some fast times in the third fork. I was asking Jerry how, uh, how much elevation change it was. He said it's over 30,000 feet. I said, is that change? He goes, no, that's climb. 30,000 feet. So imagine going from sea level to well past the top of Mount Everest on dark sled. I'm heading back to the starting line now. The race is about to begin and you can feel the excitement in the air. You know, folks come from all around the world, some to participate, but most just to see the mushers off. There are plenty of Iditarod legends here, but let's not forget about these amazing athletes, the dogs. Final preparations are underway. These teams have dedicated their lives to this sport, and it all builds to this crucial moment. Covering 300 miles of snowy wilderness in sub-zero temperatures on a sled. That is what I call a trailblazer. It'll be a hard journey, but what a place to have an adventure. <laughs>